Okay, uh, Andy, remind me, um, I can't tell from my screen if we have members of the public attending. Uh, sure, yeah, we do actually. So we have an attendees tab. Um, right now, you'll just see myself as a sort of monitoring entity, but um, we have uh, right now, no audience members, just myself as a, as a, a monitoring kind of computer I keep okay. on the side. So uh, you, can, you can monitor that list though, if you'd like to, uh, members might be interested. Um, there is a uh, uh, participants button. And then the, under that tab, there's panelists and attendees. Um, I see we have Mark Rosen here, um, who's in the audience. Uh, and, um, and then uh, obviously the committee members, we can do roll call, I guess, for that. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, Mark is attending, but he's uh, uh, listed as a uh, participant or an audience member. There he is. Okay, we got him. Okay. Um, all right, I'll call this meeting of the Community Preservation Committee uh, to order. And uh, first thing I'd like to do, um, which we don't usually do when we get to have this <clears throat> meeting face to face, is acknowledge that it's been a year. Um, the last time we did a face to face and uh, Certainly didn't expect it to be this long and certainly didn't expect uh, that uh, we wouldn't know when it would end. Uh, in any event, thank you all for uh, your hard work and participation uh, and uh, keeping the businesses of the city going uh, in the way that we have to uh, and, uh, and doing it as transparently as possible uh, with continuing uh, public participation. Uh, okay. Um, I'd like to uh, welcome on board uh, three new members, uh, and I'm, I'm certainly happy to uh, have, have uh, uh, seats filled, um, especially at the start of a cycle. Uh, and we have uh, new members, uh, Glenn Richards, representing uh, the Historic Commission, Chuck Griffin, representing the Parks Department, and Tom O'Brien representing the Housing Authority. Uh, welcome and uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to, um, because we have new members, uh, just give a, a real brief overview of uh, how we proceed um, and how we have proceeded generally uh, over the years to um, uh, in a friendly manner and, a, and I think a successful manner uh, get recommendations over to city council that have uh, resulted in some uh, very significant benefits to the city and uh, good uses of, of, of these uh, public funds. Um, first off, uh, there are resources that are available to each of us um, uh, in addition to uh, Caitlin and, and Andy in the planning office, uh, with regard to individual questions that you may have about um, how the Community Preservation Act works generally, uh, what uh, projects may be eligible or may not be eligible and why, and uh, what has happened in cities and towns uh, throughout the Commonwealth. Uh, and that uh, resource uh, single um, stop shopping is uh, the Community Preservation Coalition, of which we are a member, and uh, we have access uh, through their website and through their direct contact information on the website. They have staff which which can answer questions directly for you. Uh, it's been be very beneficial over the years, not only to have that resource individually, but also to have that group uh, on uh, Beacon Hill uh, really being advocates for the um, Community Preservation Act communities and uh, their efforts at stabilizing the um, trust fund and the uh, matching funds uh, at a, at a uh, rate which uh, continues to uh, give a, a great return to the uh, uh, local amounts that are collected at uh, the cities and towns. Um, in addition to that, uh, 
we have published, and it's through the city website uh, at, at the uh, CPA slot, uh, the uh, evaluation criteria that the uh, com uh, committee over the years has developed uh, that we uh, refer to as we're reading the applications. Um, and uh, that criteria is broken out by the categories uh, that are eligible for these funds. And uh, those categories are the preservation of historic resources, uh, the creation and preservation of open space and recreational resources, and the creation, preservation, and support of community housing. Uh, that's uh, the slots that we have to um, look to uh, to look at eligibility. Uh, the criteria also breaks down uh, how we uh, compare one application to the other uh, and need to do that because uh, in every event, every year, we have um, uh, requests for more funds than are available in any given year. Um, so uh, often we are, we are trying to sp uh, spread out the, uh, the riches uh, for the uh, most worthy projects uh, in amounts that, uh, uh, although maybe not uh, uh, all that were requested, uh, are amounts that we believe would, would uh, advance a worthy project. Uh, finally, keep in mind that what we're doing here is um, creating at the end of the day, at the end of a cycle, recommendations to city council because we don't appropriate any funds. We only recommend to city council for their appropriation. Uh, so at the, uh, as we go through the process annually, we get the applications in. Uh, we have our first meeting where we uh, discuss generally the schedule of how we're going to approach uh, the applications. Uh, each at each uh, of two meetings, uh, we'll have uh, uh, roughly half of the applicants at, at the meeting, uh, and they will give oral presentations to us, summarizing the most important uh, elements. Uh, of their application and why they think it should be recommended. Um, and we will get the opportunity to have a dialogue and have question and answers with the applicant at that time. Um, if uh, in advance, um, as you review the applications uh, and in advance of the uh, scheduled date for that applicant to come in, if you see something uh, that jumps out at you that you would like additional information on or you would like the applicant to address at the time of the meeting. And it would be fair to give them a heads up that you'd like them to address that. Let Caitlin know and she can by email, uh, you can let her know by email. She can email the applicant uh, that there's been a request for additional information if they can get it. Uh, and uh, to be prepared to address a, uh, a question that you raise. Um, that that uh, uh, doesn't often come up, but, but occasionally it's certainly helpful uh, so that the uh, time in meeting is used more, more effectively for that applicant uh, if they've got that information in advance. Um, after we go through two sessions, talking to, to the applicants, uh, we then have a third meeting. And at that meeting, uh, it's, uh, uh, the public can be at, in attendance, but generally it's, it's an executive session and we're discussing the applications among ourselves uh, and make it to, with the goal of making a uh, uniform and um, most often unanimous at the end of the day decision on the uh, list of applications which we will recommend for some funding and the amount uh, for each application that we will recommend to be funded. Uh, okay, I think that that um, I think that that covers generally uh, how how we proceed. Uh, let me stop here now uh, since since uh, I've I've uh, um, uh, I know you're, you, you've, you've
you three new members, this is this is all brand new to you. But uh, is there something that that uh, that it, that you'd like to ask me now before we we go on with the with the agenda in terms of how we approach the applications and what what you you may need to be looking at? Good. Okay. We have it. Excuse me, Mike. Yes. Uh, uh, I was wondering if it might be uh, useful to point out uh, once we make our recommendations and the amounts and send them to city council, the city council can reject or accept our proposal, but they can't change the amount. Um, I believe that's correct. I know they cannot increase the amount. Uh, however, um, it may be something that I, I, I should uh, review and, and uh, so that it uh, is, is current, uh, they may be able to reduce the amount. Oh, really? Yeah, this is Andy. Yeah. I agree with what Mike has just said. Yes. I think that they can reduce it, but not okay. uh, increase it. Okay. Huh. okay. But, but it's good to keep in mind <clears throat> yeah. what the yeah. parameters are. Right, and, and uh, of course, any, any reduction uh, that uh, would, would happen, the uh, funds that don't get um, appropriated would just come back into the general right. fund and, and use later. Okay, um, the uh, next item on the agenda is, is there is a late file application from the Open Space Committee. <clears throat> and um, uh, I will tell you that history of that is that I, I fell asleep at the switch because I'm supposed to do that every year for the Open Space Committee. And um, it just blew by me. Um, so uh, Jordy Vining was at the planning office, was uh, good enough to tap me on the shoulder electronically. And uh, I, I uh, put it in after the, the filing date. And as a result, uh, it, it needs to uh, be voted on uh, if, if you were, uh, for you, you, the committee has to decide by, unan by a majority vote to accept a, a late file that is after the application deadline or one that would, for instance, come in the middle of a cycle um, for uh, a project that, that comes up then and uh, the applicant seems to, to be in a, in a state of emergency where they need funding in the middle of a cycle. Uh, that, that's not what we have here. We just have, have uh, um, a, uh, uh, a process where it uh, it certainly could have and should have been in by the fourth, uh, but it was not. So Jane, could you could you handle this vote for me uh, and the discussion? Sure. Do we have a motion to accept the late file application of the OSC OS the Open Space Reserve Fund? Yeah, this is Glenn Richards. I'll uh, move to accept that application. Tom O'Brien, I'll second it. All right. Any discussion? Uh, this is Don Little. I got a point of order. Do we need to do a roll call before we do any votes? We have we have to do a roll call every time once we're, when we're on Thanks. Zoom. We haven't done a attendance roll call though. I thought. Uh, no, that we haven't. Don, you're you're all over it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, tell you what, Jane, um, why don't you do attendance and a vote? How's that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Nice. All right. Um, okay, so this is the roll call. I'm just going to go in order that I have everybody. Uh, is Don Little here? Don Little is present. Chuck Griffin? Chuck Griffin's present. Paul Healy? Present. Michael Desette? Present. Tom O'Brien? Present. Mark Rosen? Present. Glenn Richards? Yeah, present and here. Uh, Jane Healy is present and here. And um, I don't have a list of members. Do we have any other members that were missing on the call? Mr. Walters. Yeah, Don Walters. Is, um... He said he couldn't be here. OK. OK, so he's he's absent. All right. Um, but he, he is he is still a member, Andy. 
Uh, yes, correct. Uh, okay. Point of order, Mr. Chair, though, I uh, just wanted to make a note, <clears throat> just a reminder, um, uh, this is rare, rare for this committee to meet uh, with this sort of Zoom platform, but um, most of the boards have gotten to the habit. Every time you take a vote on something, um, it should be a roll call vote. It seems onerous, but uh, it's part of the uh, remote uh, meeting requirements. I agree. Okay, so um, I guess we'll we'll note that Don Walters is is not here tonight. Um, and I'll start over then. Do we have a motion to accept the late file application um, from the for the open space reserve fund? Okay, this is Glenn again, Glenn Richards, and yes, I'll move to accept that uh, late file application. Any second, second it, Tom O'Brien. I'll second it. Discussion? No. Um, and so I guess we'll just go down each member then. That's what we took. Um, yeah. And my order has changed. So Chuck, you're first. I say yes. Paul? Yes. Mike? Yes. Tom? Yes. Mark? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Don? Yes. And uh, Jane, yes. So uh, motion approved. Thank you. Okay. Um, in your packet is the proposed schedule. <laughs> and uh, we've just uh, assigned regular Wednesday meeting dates on March 24 and April 28, um, which um, we generally meet the, um, what is it, the 4th? Used, used to be the, the uh, Tuesday, but now it's the fourth Wednesday uh, of the month. And uh, it looks to me like um, the allocation between the two dates is certainly doable um, uh, in terms of uh, the, the, the uh, equal almost equal allocation of, of the, uh, uh, the projects. So any other uh, discussion or problems with the, with the proposed schedule? Uh, this is Paul. Um, I, I just had the feeling that the, uh, the schedule for the first meeting seems, seemed to encompass more of the uh, more complex uh, filings. And so I, I, I don't know if we wanna re rearrange any of those or have a third meeting or, or just stick with the two meetings and uh, realize that the first one meeting may be a, a longer one. Uh, this is Andy, could I speak to that? Sure. Uh, just based on experience, I, I, I wouldn't disagree. I think there's possibility of uh, strong public uh, turnout for a few of those, maybe some public comment that folks might wanna make. So whether you're taking public comment on all these, you know, uh, one by one, um, I guess it's sort of up to you. I think on the flip side, um, and this is partly due to sort of um, seeing how meetings go in general, it, you know, it might also help to sort of get the applicants to compact their presentations and, and provide the focus for the CPC, um, thereby allowing the time for the public comment that you want to hear because you will be meeting on these applications after the presentations at a subsequent meeting to discuss your ranking. So um, the primary purpose of these meetings is the, um, you know, overview uh, from the applicant because you've already got the documentation uh, and then they, to hear any public comment on these, right? I, to me, it seems, um, uh, you, I certainly can see an argument for adding another night, but I think it also could be done by um, keeping everybody on, on schedule and track. Um, this is yeah. Caitlin. I'll also note that the on the first night, five of the applications are from the um, New Report Parks Department. And so I was trying to kind of organize it so they would only need to come on one night. Um, but, right. You know, up to you. Um, now I, I know the uh, open space reserve uh, is always short, but uh, I'd be happy to bounce that to the second day or the uh, the second date. Um, 
in terms of other than the, the, the parks department applications. Um, yeah, this is Andy again. I don't uh, have any particular preference. I happen to be um, speaking to the first one, Market Landing. So if that helps for any reason, I'm, I have no problem shifting that date. If uh, up to you, but I, I, I have no preference. So. Okay. Anybody have a strong feeling one way or the other? Um, nope. Mike, it, it might it might be safer if we were to. Um, uh, leave the open space on the first day night and 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 shift market landing to the second because um, I think I think that that is the one more likely to get uh, to to take some time yeah. yeah I'd agree with that works fine for me um, Caitlin we'll just make that adjustment right okay yep we'll do Um, otherwise, uh, if there aren't any concerns, uh, would the committee approve the uh, vote to approve the schedule as revised? Um, yes. You think we need a vote on that? <laughs> I, I'm happy to. Um, Sorry, just uh, only because we've done it out of habit in the past and just for the convenience of the office. Okay. Uh, then can I have a motion to uh, approve the schedule as revised? Mark Rosen here, so moved. A second. Tom O'Brien, second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Do a roll call. Jane Healy. Yes. Don Little. Yes. Paul Healy. Yes. Mark Rosen. Yes. Don Waters, not here. Chuck Griffin. Yes. Tom O'Brien? Yes. Glenn Richards? Yes. Chair votes yes. This is Glenn again. Sorry if I zoned out there. Did we change the date of either of those meetings, March 24th or June 28th? Or we, was it or more the content? We kept the we kept the two dates and we moved uh, the first project at Market Landing Park. Uh, to the uh, Wednesday, April 28th. Okay. All right, just a cut. All right, thank you. Sorry. Okay. Glenn, just to clarify, I you probably just misspoke, but I think you said it was June for the second meeting. It's in April. Yeah, April. Yeah, I did misspeak. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, in your package, uh, there's a uh, draft budget for this cycle yep um, and any those of us who've been through some cycles this looks very familiar uh, for those of you who have not um, it uh, uh, it is not intuitively obvious <laughs> but <clears throat> we have money from two sources uh, it's a local surcharge um, and uh, we, that's the first uh, item that uh, is estimated to come in for, uh, for uh, this, this cycle, this uh, uh, fiscal year. And um, then we get a, uh, an amount, amount coming from the state trust fund, uh, which uh, depends on some moving targets. Um, and uh, we are applying a very conservative estimate, uh, at present estimate of only 11% match. Um, uh, I believe that this, that was last year's, I believe this year's is predicted, it will end up being uh, in excess of that, but just so for purposes of uh, not uh, um, spending money we don't uh, and aren't gonna have, uh, we are going with the conservative 11%. <clears throat> so that's the estimated revenues. <clears throat> The next number, the 101,000 uh, is uh, per uh, Ethan, is the money that is currently in uh, the uh, general uh, fund, uh, community preservation fund, which is uh, uh, ma maintained uh, uh, at the city uh, and represents a cu uh, accumulation of uh, uh, interest uh, uh, 
refunded monies from uh, uh, that were not used on other projects uh, and uh, uh, accumulated un basically unspent uh, uh, monies over the years. Um, we have uh, recurring annual obligations to uh, service uh, the stadium bond and the Cherry Hill bond. And we also have recurring annual administrative costs of uh, roughly $12,000. So uh, of that uh, 1.18, uh, estimated total available funds uh, already committed before we start are 151,000. So uh, the estimate of available funds is uh, uh, just uh, 1,037,000. Um, <clears throat> and we also have in a savings account for uh, uh, open space reserve projects that might come up uh, a an amount of six hundred and twenty-nine thousand uh, dollars, almost six hundred thirty thousand. So, basically, the number we're looking at for use is the million thirty-seven. Uh, keeping in mind that for open space uh, projects, we also can access uh, the savings account. Um, that's uh, the open space reserve account. We currently do not have a, any reserve account for uh, either historic uh, preservation projects uh, or um, community housing projects. Okay. Any questions about the uh, uh, draft budget? Question. Um, Kaylin, maybe you can, you, you, Maybe you know, or Mike, or anybody, um, but the hundred and one thousand that seems higher than what we left it last um, after our recommendations last year. Is that are some of those funds um, funds that have come back from projects that have closed out? I'm just I'm I'm th I'm asking because of our discussion about sort of following those projects more closely. Yep. Hi, Jane. Um, I'll have to circle back with Ethan and get a kind of breakdown of um, that total for you. Okay. So yeah, I don't think we left 100,000, but maybe we did. My memory is not that great. Um, and where is Bradley Fuller in this? Can someone remind me? Because I know that I read um, in the staff report yeah. that the city council hasn't approved it. And I can't remember, did we send that? Were we recommending a bond for that? Yes, we were. For it. Um, the city council is still looking at that. And as I understand it, they have it in committee this week to look at again. Uh, unfortunately, it's been kicking around for quite a while. And the council was looking, I think, for a little more detail on some issues to be addressed before voting on it. So you're right that it was a bonding question. Um, and the council still has that in committee. Okay, but we wouldn't have a payment this year anyway, even if it did go out. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay, so that won't that will not impact FY 2020. All right. Right. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other questions about the budget? Uh, we will get uh, updated estimates from Ethan for the local amount if that were to uh, uh, if he were to have a better estimate as we get down the road uh, toward our um, uh, decision making time. Uh, as well as uh, we may get better estimates from the state as as the year goes. By uh, as to what might come out in November as the match. The, the coalition uh, keeps a close eye on that as well. Okay. Uh, your packet included uh, quarterly reports. Um, uh, each project is, is required to uh, each quarter uh, give us a, an update of the status of the project. Um, and uh, so you have those for, for your uh, review. They're summarized in the staff report that uh, Caitlin put together as well. Um, when we get uh, further down in the agenda item uh, to other updates, uh, we can take uh, any questions you have from uh, the staff report. Uh, or from the quarterly reports. Um, the annually, the Community Preservation Coalition uh, um, 
sends us an invoice for dues uh, to, to its members. Uh, the invoice this year is for $3,500. Uh, and um, uh, we need to um, approve the payment of that invoice uh, and the uh, continuation of our membership for another year in, in the coalition. Um, do I have a, a motion to approve the invoice? I'm um, Ryan, I make a motion. And a second? I'll second it. Okay, that's Chuck. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. <clears throat> Jane Healy? Yes. Don Little? Yes. Paul Healy? Yes. Mark Rosen? Yes. Chuck Griffin? Yes. Tom O'Brien? Yes. Glenn Richards? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, the packet also contained the draft minutes from our, whoa, October 28, 19, uh, 2020. Um, can't believe it's been that long, but it has a uh, meeting. Um, okay, uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Mark Rosen, so moved. And a second? I'm um, O'Brien, second. Okay, any discussion? Uh, yes, Glenn Richards, quick question. Where we were not around for that, should we abstain from this vote since we have no way of no, you know, judging would, the minutes? Thanks, Chuck, that would be correct, yes. Okay. Any other questions or comments or corrections to the minutes? No. Okay, then we'll take a vote on the motion to approve. Jane Healy? Yes. Don Little? Yes. Paul Healy? Yes. Mark Rosen? Yes. Chuck Griffin? Abstain. Abstain. Tom O'Brien? Abstain. Glenn Richards? Abstain. And the chair votes yes. Caitlin, the, co the copy that I had in the email was a red line. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm ass assuming that'll get cleaned up before it goes in the file. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> okay. Correct. We'll accept all the changes that um, Rachel made in there and we'll right. um, make a right. clean copy for the site. Yep. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Okay. On uh, the other updates. <clears throat> Uh, from the staff reports, uh, there are a, a couple things. Um, uh, Andy has asked whether we would uh, uh, consider and make a decision uh, as to uh, whether or not we would uh, allow the applications to be filed uh, in electronic format only and uh, distributed that way um, uh, to us. Um, and uh, <clears throat> Uh, I'm happy to throw that out there for for discussion. Um, you know, unfortunately, I'm I'm of a demographic that likes the paper, so uh, it probably puts me in the minority. I don't know. I'm with you, Mike. Tom O'Brien. <laughs> okay. Um, this is Andy. Could I speak to that, Mr. Chair? Sure. Um, it, yeah, understood. <laughs> I, and um, we uh, we have had. Have some boards that have migrated, a couple that have migrated to basically all electronic. Um, and it's understandable that some folks, um, they want to still receive a paper copy. Um, I would ask uh, if if it's possible, if, if enough members um, are comfortable with the all online versions, again, trying to save um, paper and um, distributions and so forth to, to sort of make things seamless with um, the times. The um, If it's possible, if the generic could be that uh, members go electronic, but that a specific uh, members that want a hard copy, just let us know, we, that would just reduce the number of copies that we have to then print and uh, use paper for or, or have distributed. Just a thought, uh, whatever works for you, of course, as a committee, but um, we're just trying to um, automate things for, uh, for efficiency. Sure. 
Caitlin, I, I assume that uh, per the instructions on the application that the uh, uh, applicants are still bringing in 10 copies? That's right. Yeah, okay. Um, would, uh, how would it affect your, your workload uh, if the applicants only uh, submitted electronically and then, you know, half the committee said, I want copies. So you'd have to print them, right? That'd be right. Yep. We'd have to print them in the office. Okay. Um, which is, we're happy to do. Okay. All right. Um, well, I, I guess for, for my personally, uh, if I can get a hard copy, uh, that would be, that would be okay with me. Um, would, would uh, I guess the public's access to the um, to the applications if they want to see any of them, uh, they can always go to the website and do it that way. Um, okay. You you may have an issue where somebody doesn't want to doesn't want to negotiate the website or um, like me would want to come in and and see the the hard copy. So you know. Possibly for public access, you may want at least one copy in 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 the in a, in a in yeah. A we would always take one hard copy for the file. Yeah, okay. that's always yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and we could, um, given that that doesn't affect this round at all, we already have hard copies for this round. Really, um, it would be the assumption is if 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 we're making this shift that we would um, go electronic with the next round. Check with you uh, all the new, all the members that are currently you know for some reason someone leaves. Um, checking with all of you current members. You know the next round. Uh, anybody who wants a hard copy, we'd have those printed out for you. Otherwise, we would ask you to just go to the website. And it just reduces the amount of, you know, trees we're killing and, um, you know, distribution we have to do of, of uh, uh, duplicative things that are automated. So, sure. Okay. Um, Andy, would you like a, a a vote to that effect to change the uh, the uh, rules of the committee uh, in terms of uh, uh, the number of applications that are, uh, that, that need to be submitted? Yeah, that would be helpful. Just to uh, you can move to uh, make the change effective accordingly, um, and we'll just reflect that on the application form. That way, applicants aren't wasting or killing trees, and we're not uh, wasting trees either. We'll just do the minimum needed that our hard copies are uh, needed, the one in our files, and everyone else can go to the website. Okay, uh, then um, let me try try this on. Uh, I move to um, uh, amend the rules of the committee. Uh, such that uh, uh, applications can be submitted electronically only um, uh, with uh, at least one hard copy being maintained uh, uh, in the planning office the, files and uh, yeah. any, any, committee, any committee member who wants uh, a hard copy uh, can request it and get it. Um, so I'll, I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Chuck Griffin, I'll second it. Okay, any further discussion? I'm O'Brien, I always want a hard copy. <laughs> we'll do. No Me too. Me too. Yeah. We'll make sure anybody who wants a hard copy gets one. Thank all you, right. Caitlin. Okay. Um, all right, let's do uh, roll, uh, a vote. Uh, Jane Healy? Yes. Todd Little? Yes, reluctantly. <laughs> okay. I'm done. Paul. We'll get you a hard copy. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Healy. Yes. Mark Rosen. Yes. Chuck Griffin. Yes. Tom O'Brien. Yes. More than reluctantly. <laughs> Glenn Richards. Yes. Uh, the chair votes reluctantly. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, you. There's uh, uh in addition, uh, is, as referenced in the staff report and also in your packet is an email that was received um, oh, yeah. about uh, a, the potential for uh, wanting to put together an application for a community garden and seeking some, some assistance uh, and advice on, on that. Uh, it, it appears since the, uh, the email uh, that uh, uh, Caitlin has uh, uh, reached out to the to the uh, individual that sent the email, um, and um, it appears it's not it's not going to be a, a an issue for a current application, but possibly a future one, um, and that uh, uh, the the person has been given uh, some direction 
um, uh, to uh, seek out additional information and, and, and resources. Um, it, it looks to me like um, uh, th there would need to be um, some coordination uh, with uh, the Open Space Committee, the um, CONCOM, uh, and and uh, maybe uh, uh, the Parks Department uh, and and the City generally in terms of uh, what what uh, opportunities there were for space for such things and as well as the infrastructure uh, construction that that would be necessary that you know most mostly the uh, the the, uh, the water getting to the site um, so I, I I think we should be open to um, uh, needing some some additional coordination and assistance to 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 this person for 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 uh, any kind of a um, feasible application to be to be presented to us in the future. Mike, it's Mark Rosen. May I speak? Sure. Um, I have some uh, direct knowledge and experience with these kinds of projects. Uh, my wife is been involved with getting some gardens established along the rail trail and the parks department uh, has been very cooperative. Um, it's been done, in other words, uh, the city has provided large rain barrels that they fill weekly with water. Um, it's not a difficult matter in terms of city resources. Depending on where the property would be would determine obviously, which department would uh, need to get involved. But um, I've seen it done and it works quite well. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Chuck Griffin with Parks. Yes, it would, seem, it would seem to me that this is, uh, well, as you say, it depends where the land is, but it's could very likely be something that Parks would be involved with. And I would think that the, um, the person that wants to follow this should consult parks department. I don't really see it as a CPC function. Okay. Uh, I had a question or a comment. Yes, Don. Uh, either for the parks or open space representative. Uh, unofficially, do you know of an acre of land that could be used for this? Off the top of my head, I don't. Um, Are they looking for an acre? That's what the letter says. That's a lot of lands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at least, it says. <laughs> yeah, at least an acre, right? Oh, okay. And a mule. <laughs> <laughs> How about down you know, by Mike, the waterfront? Mike, were you asking um, just for someone to be a resource if they want, if they do decide to? Um, file an application next year? Uh, I guess or, indirect, indirectly, I, I just, yes, in, this, in the sense that we should be ready to um, assist. Because yeah. it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complicated package to put together. But, it's, but I, I believe there's interest in the city because uh, we, we, we've heard of it before uh, just not as as uh, direct as as this communication was. Okay. So what are we? Are we discussing this just as a heads up for members then, or? Yes. At, at okay. this at this point, when I realized that it wasn't it wasn't something imminent. Um, okay, Caitlin, am I correct about that? You're correct. Um, we pass it on to you. This is a correspondence directed to the um, to the whole group, and we've connected the resident um, Kate Hanlon with Lisa Reed, Parks Director, and Parks Commission Chair Kimberly Turner. So they're kind of taking, um, you know, they're connecting with her to see if they could put something together for um, an application um, grant cycle in the next year or two. Okay. Good. Good. And uh, I think, oh, sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, uh, yeah, and Caitlin knows. The, would I'm sure already have done this or would think of this. If they do contact the planning office again or any of us, we can um, let them know that we're, we're going through our decision-making process this year and they may wanna pop into the meeting. 
um, just to see what it's all about. Okay, I will, thank you. Good. Uh, Caitlin, quick question for you from the staff reports. Um, do you know what the status of the uh, conservation restriction is for the Col Colby Farms open space over there in that development? Um, I would like to ask Andy Poor if he has an updated knowledge about that. Yeah, the uh, the city, uh, Mike, uh, it's hard. Uh, I can pull up an image actually to show if you want, but um, the lot eight the city already owns, that's the L-shaped one. Uh, the two that are closest to the street uh, have been conveyed. Uh, to the city there, uh, so matching a frontage there is ours, but the, the large piece of the back has not yet been conveyed. Um, that's going to be done. I think it's the last unit in the occupancy of the development. So um, we're basically expecting this spring uh, to have that larger piece transferred to the city. Okay. Um, and is, is, there, is, there the, the, is there a plan to uh, put a CR on, on, on that land once the city owns it? Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, it, it won't be. Uh, it, it's something that we need to do. Uh, however, it's not a crucial or urgent, urgent thing. Uh, I know you and I and, uh, and Jordy and a few others have spoken a lot about open space management. Um, and so what we're trying to do is have a co co uh, coherent and organized way of doing that for all the city parcels. Um, this is, is one of the focuses right now, as you know, because um, it's a new acquisition, essentially, or that the city's getting um, in terms of open space to monitor and, and uh, preserve in its state. Uh, so uh, we are looking to do that, um, but um, maybe that's something that uh, we could work on with the Open Space Committee. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Julia Gobertson, Jordy Vining, and myself, uh, we could uh, begin working on that piece of it. However, it's not uh, quite as important, in my opinion, as uh, the question of how we're going to manage that uh, land or what state it's going to be managed in uh, and keeping that going because that, um, if it's not stayed up on seasonally, um, could have an impact. Whereas uh, we know this land has to be preserved just by its uh, its purchase, uh, and so um, although the restrictions uh, needs to be followed up on, uh, it, it it goes without saying that it's in full in a force and effect just by the acquisition that we can't be using that land for uh, say building a you know a, another public works facility or something like that. Um, Understood. I just I didn't realize that uh, the the large parcel that lot one hadn't been conveyed yet either. So, question. Yes. CR, does that mean conservation? Restriction? Conservation restriction. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, apologies if we've been using acronyms. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, does anybody else have any, uh, any other uh, new business uh, or uh, questions or comments from the staff report? This is Don Little. I did. Uh, one of the uh, quarterly reports, the uh, pilot mail walkway replacement, it was down near the end, um, the applicant's update says uh, it might be changing the uh, material that's used. And mm -hmm. in section three of the update, it states, um, if necessary, seek permission from CPC to alter the material to be used. Um, it also says, you know, might complete the project in spring, summer of 21. So I didn't know whether we would need to uh, confirm, well, whether we'd need to decide whether that's a change of the application and then tell the parks director. I, I don't recall offhand what the, whether the, the scope of that project was described with particularity, like the specifically uh, the, the materials to be used. Um, frankly, I think in that area, it, it might be, it might be best to, um, uh, have the uh, historic commission weigh in on it. Um, so, uh, and Chuck, Chuck Griffin, can I speak to this? Sure, Chuck. Uh, I'm sorry that I can't remember the name of the product, nor did I get a pitch from the salesman who uh, was pushing it with the city, but it's used uh, mostly on more commercial looking projects. And my interest in others that on the parks board is to have this be more of a gravel-like appearance. And we know of a product that's been used um, in Boston, the nor north side of Boston, and the snow has it covered, or we would be out there looking at it, kicking it literally, and proposing whether we want that. So it is, it's two different specifications, and, and both of them can support wheelchairs, which is a okay. problem. Okay. But it'd be nice if, yeah, we'd be happy to take it to uh, Historic if that's, 
I don't know that that's a real fit here, but yeah. Um, I, I think if if they uh, if they you know if the change in materials affects uh, in a material way their budget, uh, you know we might be seeing them again for that purpose. But uh, um, uh, I just. Uh, I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to go back and look at the application and see if if uh, there were limitations on the materials or or whether they they were locked into one material in in the approval. So, Mike. Yes. I didn't uh, hear it. Uh, what project are we talking about? This is the walkways at the at the mall. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Don, does that answer your question? Yep, I, I don't have enough experience to remember what criteria we use for okay. requesting the applicants when they make a change. Okay. Usually it's, it's, uh, um, it's scope, uh, you know, where, they, where they're, instead of doing a, you know, a walkway, they decide to pave a parking lot. You know, it's, that would be a change in scope. That's, that's generally the way I, I look at it. So. Uh, this is Andy. Just to be clear and um, kind of simplify the process for everybody, the only things that are memorialized, because the member uh, Mike said earlier, the committee is functions as an advisory board uh, to the city council on this appropriations category. So uh, when the city council makes that appropriation, the things that are memorialized at that time and in, in formal related to the appropriation of funds is, uh, is the city council order. And then the committee's recommendation, which uh, the language we use now and have been using, I think, for the last two cycles, uh, incorporates by reference the committee's recommendation so that each project description, so whatever's in that paragraph for that project uh, that's referenced in the uh, city council order is what's memorialized in terms of limitations on the project. There might have been other materials that were, you know, presented during, uh, you know, for a project, for instance, but unless they're referenced in the uh, council order, which is would be rare, or the project description that is written up for the committee's uh, recommendations to the council, uh, you know, those details would be left outside of it. But if something is referenced in those documents, that would be captured as, as maybe a substance of detail. But Mike's correct. We should take a look at that more specifically to this instance. So. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And I think, I think in, in some uh, projects, uh, the materials are um, important to the preservation of the uh, community character. Um, and therefore they might find their way into, you know, the uh, specific description that we're, that we're recommending. Um, other, you know, other than that, um, generally, I don't think we, we get that far into the weeds. So uh, anything else? Any, anybody else have any other questions or comments? Any new business? Okay, our uh, <clears throat> next meeting, uh, and it will be the... Uh, uh, first group of applications we'll hear from. Uh, that's on uh, March 24th at 7 p.m. I presume uh, that's 2021. Yeah. 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 2021 <laughs> um, in our in our lovely Zoom format. Uh, and uh, uh, I look forward to uh, having uh, everyone uh, having examined the applications. Uh, let Caitlin, know if you need any additional information from any of the applicants that we'll be hearing from, and uh, uh, they uh, they will be ready to answer your questions and, and speak with you at that time. Um, excuse me, Michael. This is Glenn Richards. Uh, maybe this was in the package, which I don't have. But uh, it, how how um, to focus on the that first batch? Uh, is that how can I find out which applications will be in that first batch? Uh, it, there there was a uh, a uh, schedule, a, a separate document <clears throat> that lists the applications by uh, in the two dates. And uh, when we looked at the schedule, we uh, took one of the applications from March 24, that's the market landing right. park expansion, and we moved that to April 28. Um, so that left six uh, in the uh, uh, schedule that will happen on March 24. Okay, I'm, I'm, is that not on the CPC uh, page on the city's website? Because I'm, I'm uh, Kaylin distributed it, and I believe it's posted on the page. If not, we'll double check and make sure it's there. Okay. And yeah. it was emailed to everybody in the committee. I assume you got yes. it. Yes. Uh, All right. I'll look again. I'll look again on that. Okay. And uh, hearing no 
additional business. I think uh, we have once again efficiently concluded our business for the evening and uh, we can adjourn. See you all in a month. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I make a motion to adjourn. I second. <laughs> you need a roll call. Do we? Oh, man. <laughs> okay. If anybody says no, they're in trouble. All right. Uh, Jane Healy. Yes. Don Little. Yes. Paul Healy. Yes. Mark Rosen. Mark, you already gone? <laughs> I think he yeah. is. <laughs> Chuck yes, Griffin. Yes. <laughs> Tom O'Brien. Yes. Len Richards. Yes. And chair says yes and thank you. <laughs> <laughs>